Hi, I'm Taryn and I'm doing some online art classes. These classes are for anyone of any ability, any age, and it's more about just exploring some different mediums and sort of more playing, not, not getting bogged down into the technical side of things, just exploring, creating and enjoying it. So the first activity I've got for you is doing a mixed media of some Banksias. You can see it. I'm lucky I um, happen to have the bush backing right onto my art studio here and there's unlimited supply of Banksias and it just happens to be a subject that I really love. I love the individuality in each one and also just the, yeah, the texture uh, the, and the variety of texture you have in each, each of the Banksias. So that's what I thought it would be something fun to start with. So I've got some here and here's a little something I have earlier. So you can see here the different stages that you find them in, but I exceptionally love this part. So you can see the tops are quite textured and then you've got these beautiful pods. Some of them are open, some of them are closed and these gorgeous, what would you call them? It's almost like hairs, but they're bristly and rough and sort of go in all directions and yeah, so it's just really, the more you look at them, the more fascinating they are. You can see that's obviously a smaller one. But see so that the shape itself, like this one's kind of more of a coney shape. This one's a bit fatter and bigger. And see, he's got a lot more pods on this one. And see here too, the stem, see how it's quite rough. And a lot of them sort of go out at different angles as well. So that's something to keep in mind when you're doing your artwork. And you can see on this one I have these amazing sort of serragated leaves. And they've kind of got little twists and stuff to them. They're not sort of flat. So that's something we can play with as well. So I'm going to pop those to the side and I'll line up with my easel. If you don't have an easel at home, you don't need one. You can work flat on a table. You could rest, rest a board up against, up against the windowsill or anything like that. Just however you feel more comfortable at working. Um, materials. Um, I'm just using basic white paper. You could use if you've got some recycled cardboard, if you've got some um, different textured paper, anything works, anything at all that you happen to have around the house. Um, uh, the, we won't need any pencils today, but I do have some ink, some just plain black ink. If you don't have ink, you could use some watercolour, you could use some acrylic, or you could even, if you've got Posca pens, you could draw a shape and then shade it in. A lot of it sort of depends on what you have available at home. I don't expect anyone to race out to the art shop and start buying things up before they do the class. It's more about, you know, being spontaneous and going, oh, I'm going to have a go at that today and go find whatever you happen to have. So whatever you've got, that I'm, well, I'm sure you can make it work. I also will need, if you've got white chalk or a white pencil, could be a normal, um, you know, coloured pencil if they've got white in the pack and everybody wonders what the white one's for. There you go. Um, otherwise, if you've got Posca pens, anything that's sort of white-ish will work for this as well. So the aim is we're going to be painting or colouring in a black shape and then we'll be adding the white over the top to sort of create some an impression of detail and texture. All right, so it's really short, so let's get started. Bring my board closer. And I'll make sure I move my banksies out of the way so we don't get shadows and get the line onto it. It's a bit difficult this time of day because the sun is beautiful and shines straight in through the window of my studio. So hopefully you can see it clearly enough. So what I'm going to start with is just creating the impression of the impression of the shape. So I've got myself just a basic brush and some ink and I'm just going to start making a blob. Yeah, and I'm dripping it all over my bench. That happens. Dip in a bit more. My easel's fairly upright, so it could run down off the page, but sometimes I actually like that. It sort of adds to the irregularity of the artwork. Just adding some Body bits off to the side. So you want to make sure it's big enough to 
fit on the page but also allow you a little bit more space for some detail. And don't take it all the way to the bottom because don't forget we're going to be adding in a stem. So you can see I'm not really focusing too much on the shape. And for the stem, like I said before, they're fairly textured. So what we're going to do, so since this is leaning this way a little bit, I might sort of bring my stem sort of in here. Now that I made a dot, I'm going to have to incorporate that somewhere. So I'm kind of doing dabs like that. See what I was meaning about earlier, how they're kind of, they're, they're definitely not straight. They're a little bit wonky, the stems. So feel free to have a play and just, yep, yeah, make sure it's not dead straight. Now with the leaves, best way to paint them is I tend to put the brush on and kind of give it a little bit of a twist and then blob it again and then lighten it as you get closer to the actual stem itself. And because I made that little dot there, I'm going to bring another one maybe down further, sort of facing another way. Like that. And I might have one going more upright on the side. Bring that one way there, like that. Maybe bring it up a bit higher, just so it's not. You don't want it sort of exactly the same line as the other ones. And now for the serrated edges. So I'm just going to do little dabs at an angle, sort of to to give it that texture down the side. A little bit more down there, show that it's just still the leaf, just at an angle, like so. Another dip, so I'm just doing little dabs as I go and changing the angle on the other side. Like so. Now this side, more little tabs. It's okay if it goes into the banks here. And then this side. There we go. Now see I've got this big lumpy bit out here. I might put one a little bit bigger over this side. So it balances out, maybe bring that in a tiny bit. Yep. And that's the general shape of my banksia. And yours will be different again. So now's a good time. Um, it's quite warm in here today, so mine's going to be drying fairly quickly. But um, if yours is taking a little while, this might be a good chance for you to duck out and make a cuppa or grab a cold drink and a snack just while it dries a little bit more. But mine's pretty good, so I'm going to get started. So I'm just using a white pencil. And thinking about where these pods are going to go. So you can use some of the blobs that you've created. Just see there's one here. So I'm going to start drawing a pod there. Now this one isn't straight on, so it's going a little bit around the edge. So you can see I've got more of a point on this side, but not on that side. And to balance that out, I might put another one where this big bit is up here. My ink's just a little bit wet there, but it's okay. So now I've got the two. So when you're drawing them, you're aiming for them to not be evenly spaced apart or even in numbers. So you want to have sort of little groupings and then some that are out on their own. So I do have space for one there, but that would then be evenly spaced. So in this case, I'm going to move him more to the middle and make it more of a whole pod this time. Also to try and make them similar sizes if you can. So now we've got three, but I might add an extra one butting up against this one. And this one I think I might make a little bit more open. 
So to do that, you're drawing it like an open mouth. So if you want some more detail, that's better. And then make him a bit bigger. So you want to make sure it's about the same sort of size. You can put some lines inside it to show that it's open. Now I think we need another one up the top here. Definitely one there. Using that one at the side. And I might put one just I'm leaning in my ink here. There. And I think one just here as well. So see, you don't want to fill the whole thing and you want to allow for some space to be adding in some of the fibres and that. So you can see they're not all evenly spaced and it kind of, it's almost like it meanders around a little bit. So the next thing is to draw on each one of them. I'll show you on the closed one. See how there's almost like a line across the middle. Of each one. So for the ones that are closed, we're going to add that in. Now I'm sloping these down slightly because we're sort of looking down onto it. Some of them can be more in the middle. So see, I'm making sure they're not all in exactly the same spot. This one I might make slightly open. So it gives you a bit more of the, the idea of the shape. And then after that, I'm going to be looking at some of this texture that we talked about earlier. So to attempt that, I am going to do lots of little tiny scribbles with the tip of my pencil. Not trying to cover the whole lot, but sort of just breaking up that black surface to show that it's not smooth. You can bring some extra ones down in here. Sort of mixing it up. I'm going to make some extra what scribbles at the top because that's where the light would be hitting the top of our banks here. And while I'm doing that too, shading a little bit on the top of each of these as well just to show that the black section underneath then creates more of a shadow. Not aiming to be too neat. And then we're going to be looking at maybe a little bit more texture down below, but this would be in a lot more shadow down here too, so I'm not going to be doing too much detail in that section. And now let's look at the hairs. So like we were talking about before, they're like long hairs that come down. So these ones I'm going to have sort of sloping more outwards. And on this side, same thing. They're going to go a little bit more outwards. And then some in the middle coming a little bit more downwards, directly down. They can overlap the top of some of the little pods there. And just have a scribble, leaving some black in between some. Some areas can be a little bit thicker. Put a little bit more dense, a bit heavier in this section. Now, if you wanted, you could get your brush back again and add some extra sticking out from there, or you could use a black pen, or you could use um, even dipping a um, toothpick into your ink or your paint. 
pretty much just use whatever you've got around. I'm going to use my brush because it's just handy. You can just come back and add a few little extra bits with the black. It sort of breaks up the, those edges and because we've got the texture in here, you kind of want that little bit more. Yeah, see, I know it's only slight, but see how that adds an extra element to it? Get him back. So now once we've done all of this, you can add more. Sometimes it's you add in all the elements and then you know, go get another coffee break or leave it on the easel or on your table for a little while and come back and then think, mm, no, I think I need to add some more fibres in there or I need to add a little bit more into this section. So that's what's good about art is you don't have to rush and finish it in one hit. Even if you're sort of copying this session and you get to the end, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm really happy with that. Yeah, always come back and have another look. Right, so in the middle of our leaves now, I'm going to draw kind of a line, sort of creating the impression of the direction. You can see I'm not keeping them perfectly in the middle. This one I'm going to sort of have coming up and over because it kind of creates the direction that the folds of the leaves are moving. And then what you can do is simply add a couple of little lines into the texture of it. I'm trying to not keep them too even. just about adding a direction of where the veins would be going and now into our stem let's rough it up a little bit just some texture showing that it's it's different type of texture to what we have up the top I'm curving some of them around a little bit so that's predominantly the base of your artwork I kind of like keeping it fairly simple and it's loose and it is purely an impression of the character of the Banksia. You could add more to it and like I said before, if you could, once you've done one, now that you know what you how to do it, start exploring some other ones. You could do a whole series on different materials and see what you like best. It really is about exploring, enjoying, just being creative and just to not focus on anything other than just putting something on paper. So I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And um, I did say it was short and sweet, but each exercise I'll be posting up will be a different medium, different subject, and just a diff different excuse to enjoy some art and um, take some time out for a little while. All right, hope to see you next time. Bye.